Okay, thanks for joining, Andrew. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure joining my show. And uh, you've been uh, thanks, doing a great job uh, for Nepal cricket. You've been uh, just giving the insights on Nepal cricket to many peoples as well. Nepal cricket, the world, in the commentary box. So, welcome, Matt, to the show. Welcome, Matt, to the show. Yeah, thanks so much, Prabhan. Great to be with you. And um, real pleasure to connect with more Nepali fans. Yeah, I just want to, uh, before I go to the Asia Cup, I just uh, want to talk uh, a little bit about uh, your love to Nepal, how it has been going. It's good to see an Irish, Irish uh, player coming and coming and cricket in the different platforms, in the law. So how, that, how does that feel? Yeah, look, it, it's been uh, an incredible journey, I have to say. Um, it, it's... <laughs> When you're in Nepal, it's quite overwhelming uh, and it's very surreal, uh, I have to say, but I'm so incredibly grateful, uh, very, very humbled by the support. And um, it's constantly something that kind of I almost have to remind myself of. Um, I've always had a real love for cricket since I was a very, uh, since I've been involved in so many different ways in the sport as a player, uh, as a coach, as a tutor, as, a, as an administrator, and now as a commentator. Um, but I suppose my love has always been for the developing sides, the associate sides in particular, um, and trying to tell their stories about, you know, teams and players that don't get the limelight and don't get the scale of attention that I think they deserve. Um, and I know how good these players are, the, the men and women all around the world and what they give up, the scale of sacrifice they give up. And then um, I guess, obviously, with Nepal being one of the leading associates, there was a bit of a match made in heaven there yeah. when I first went uh, to, to use the pun up, up in the sort of Himalayan mountains. So um, I never could have expected the, the journey that it's taken me on, but I've loved every second of it. And, yeah, very, uh, very humbled to kind of really call Nepal my second home, or the yeah. world's close to my first home, because I almost spend, I spend more time there than I do in Ireland. Yeah, isn't it? Because there are a few people, they, uh, like India, they are Ravi Shastri, like uh, in uh, England, they are Nasir Rushi, and they say, especially from Nepal, there is Andrew from our side. So that's a great <laughs> love, isn't it, for you, from our country? Oh, look, it's absolutely incredible. Um, I just wish I could have been with the team for this Asia Cup. Um, it, it really nearly it came close to happening. Uh, and being honest with you, I think the only reason it came close to happening was because of the fans. Uh, the poor old Star Sports social media channels got absolutely yeah. spammed. Yeah. With yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so, you know, that for me was uh, just a complete... Uh, like, I was so grateful to people for showing me so much support and... Yeah, I'll be honest, the, the broadcast has been brilliant, but it has been a frustration not to be there and not to be able to tell the stories of the boys. And I just, I, I care so deeply about all of them now. I've got to know them so well. I know how good they can be. And I, I really, like I've said it a few times now, I really think this is only the start of the journey that they're taking. Uh, absolutely. We'll definitely love to have you in the commentary box. The commentary box. <laughs> Moments. So I just want to go uh, go back to the Asia Cup. Your initial thoughts on Nepal performance was Pakistan? Yeah, look, it, for the first 30 overs, it felt like dreamland, didn't it? Um, there were so many good things. And if we talk about those first 30 overs initially, there were so many things within that performance, which were kind of trademark Nepal, trademark uh, Monty Desai's leadership, trademark underneath Robert Powell, the brilliance of, of the runouts, both runouts to Pendersing Marie's yeah. was mind-blowingly good. Robert Powell's equally impressive. Um, but it's almost as if from that period, from the particularly when Karen KC sadly dropped Babar Azam. So if he'd taken that catch, Azam was gone for 55 and the score was 130 for five yeah. in the 32nd over. That's really game on. And it was a flat wicket. Yeah. The boundaries were small. Yeah. Um, but then, really, the old problems came back to haunt, haunt Nepal with their death bowling. Um, I think if they, if they had the game again, they, they might go with some slightly different options uh, in terms of their, their bowling stocks. But the reality is they just don't have anyone up bowling 135 plus. Yeah. You know, Karen Casey, I think his, his fastest delivery was clock 133. He was outstanding. But then even him at the death in his final two overs, they got quite harshly treated. Um, Some Palkami's and Dependra Singh Iri, for me, would be the two best options at the death. Uh, I think they need to get Lamachane's 10 overs in the middle, not at the death when he's a real threat taking wickets. 
So a few small things went against them, but you've got to remember this is the number one ranked side in the world side, yeah. on their home soil with the number one ranked batter in the world in Babar Azam. Yeah. Um, and then look, Iftikhar Ahmed is an outstanding batter. He's shown his potential in the T20 game and he brought it to the ODI format there with his first career ODI ton. Yeah. Look, if they could have restricted them to 280, which was very possible, uh, we could have had a very different game. So I, I don't want to judge the batting too much. But yeah. it, it feels like like so many associates at that stage of their development. It reminds me a lot of Ireland 10, 12 years ago, or even yeah. the modern Irish side. Yeah. Um, if you don't get everything right, then yeah. you have to get everything right, or at least to a 9 out of 10, you yeah. get into trouble. And then the better side their class shows over an extended ODI period. Yeah, you've been closely following Nepalese cricket for such a long time. And... Uh, uh, you said the deep bowling and the major issue of Nepalese cricket. So, what are your thoughts on that? Look, the, the, the two the two issues, I'll be honest with you, Pravin seem to be the death bowling, and that's because of a lack of express pace, and then playing express pace bowling, um, particularly the short ball. Although, even though they were bowled out for 100 odd, I think that scorecard is a bit of a fallacy. Yeah. Uh, Kushal Bertel was very unlucky up top to uh, Shaheen Shah Freedy, and then Rohit Powdle got, you know, maybe. The, as good a delivery as you'll ever receive first ball. Yeah. So little small things went against them in their batting. That innings was probably worth more like a 160, a 180, or something in that vicinity. But the problem with the death bowling, I don't have an immediate answer. And I don't think Monty Desai has an immediate answer either. Um, bowling on flat wickets with the ball that's, you know, 20 to 25 overs old, you've got one new ball at each end. And then in the T20 game, again, it's about 15 to 20 overs old. You're not going to have enough time to get reverse swing going. I actually think Dependra Singh Iri is a really good option of the current stocks yeah. at the death. Yeah. And we have seen that used a little bit, which is strange to think of what in, in theory is a regulation off spinner. But he's just a very clever bowler, particularly around the wicket to the right handers. And if he can get his five fielders out, I think you can defend to that. But then you still need another one. And yeah. Cammy's probably got the best array of slower balls. He got the end of the back of the hand slower ball. Yeah. But that seemed to be getting picked up very quickly. And again, because of the lack of express pace, you know, if you're dropping from 130 to 115, yeah. batters of that quality at the very, very top level are going to pick that up. And on good wickets with small boundaries, they're going to punish you. I suppose that the good thing is, is that they are used to playing with those small boundaries at the TU International Cricket Ground. But yeah. as of right now, there isn't an out, and out answer. I think Gulshan Jazz is probably the other option. He's been used somewhat sparingly at the death. And it's going to continue to be a concern until Nepal can un unearth maybe one or two young 140 kilometer an hour bowlers they don't just come around they don't grow on trees um but let's hope that they can start to develop and start to come through yeah andrew and one more thing i just want to add andrew like uh, uh especially initial thoughts on the batting because their batting has, has been doing a good job isn't it even the qualifier in zimbabwe did a good job uh, they do not hold uh, big moments that's why they didn't qualify to India later this year, mm. but uh, do you think there's uh, there's some issues and Nepal's batting as well going forward? Yeah, look, I suppose if you compare it to the run that they had through those 11 uh, to 12 Cricket World Cup League 2 games uh, between home soil and Dubai and then the Asia Cup qualifier, the ACC Men's Premier on home soil, where the batting was so consistent, there'll be some disappointment with how things have gone in Zimbabwe and then uh, in Multan. I think there's a couple of things to remember. One, yeah. the upgrade in the quality of the opposition bowlers is massive. Yeah. You know, you're going from facing, with due respect to, you know, Oman's attack, which is brilliant, and Scotland's attack, which is very good. Yep. Uh, but you're going from facing them to facing Shaheen Shah Afridi. Yeah. You know, and that is, you'll be facing Jasper Bumra in a couple of yeah. days' time yeah. uh, on, on Monday. So it, it's a huge disparity. Um, a point I've made a few times on commentary, you can only get better against that quality of bowling with exposure to that. Yeah. Ireland found that through their journey. It took an awfully long time. It took over a decade because they didn't get many games against the best opposition. Yeah. Hopefully that's in the course of changing, not just with the performance excuse me, the performances that have got them to the Asia Cup that also got them to the Men's Cricket World Cup qualifier. But also now, with, let's, let's, I'd love to see some bilateral series coming in. There has been a few whispers of a, of a test nation, maybe in Ireland or Zimbabwe or, or West Indies coming to Kathmandu. Yeah. And the thing that makes that possible for Nepal, where it's probably not possible for many of the other leading associates, is there is an equity. Uh, and when I say an equity, I mean there's a financial structure and a process to allow that to be possible which just isn't possible for a Scotland who have to, you know, put on, pay so much money or a Netherlands to put on a game. Yeah. And then they may not get the fan support in 
to make that fundable. But yeah. in the team international cricket ground, if the West Indies come, there's yeah. going to be 30,000 people there and there'll be another 10,000 in and around trying to get in. Absolutely. And then you're going to have TV rights. Every single television station in yeah. Nepal is going to want to show that. Yeah. I'm sure all of the Indian broadcasters will want to take that. Yeah. And television companies love full stadia because it makes such a better product yeah. in terms of you know atmosphere, reaction, just things that happen. And you know from watching the games at the TU, they are immense. And that's yeah. the Cricket World Cup League 2 games or the ACC Men's Premier. We'll see that again in eight weeks' time at the T20 World Cup qualifier there. So imagine you bring Test Nations there. Yeah. It would just be extraordinary. And then I know it's been a lot talked about on social media, but if these floodlights do come, yeah. let's hope they do. Everyone keeps yeah. saying they're coming yeah, and they don't seem to come. And one more thing, Andrew, I just want to add. Like, mm. uh, this was Nepal's first experience playing under the floodlight, isn't it? And I think that also just uh, uh, created a huge problem for Nepal's batsmen, isn't it? Because to face a uh, uh, small like science of the under the floodlights, the new ball, it's going to be a very tough sub, even not only for Nepal, even for the big teams, isn't it? A hundred percent. And and look, the difference between, you can train to do that. So you can go and have five training sessions at, at, at one of the grounds there in Pakistan under floodlights against their netballers. It's completely different when you put a crowd into position, the broadcast cameras into position, all of the pressure that goes with that. And Shaheen Shah Afridi, who's again, another couple of clicks above the quality of those bowlers, Harris Rev, you know, they're all outstanding cricketers. Pakistan are number one in the world for a reason. Yeah. You could make a, a pretty strong argument they're one of the favourites for that World Cup coming up in two months' time. So, look, I, I wouldn't look at the game. I, I did see some comments from some of the fans. Oh, why are we still only learning? You know, because obviously Robert Powdell is, is, is rightly saying a lot of the interviews will look, we don't lose, we learn. And I think that's a great positive way to look at yeah. your development. But it's also the truth. Yeah. If, if they don't learn from these experiences, they're not going to get better. And if they don't have these experiences, they can't get better. So it's that kind of quandary yeah. of finding a way to compete at this level. But the only way you can find a way to compete at this level is by playing against teams of that quality. Mm -hmm. They could have they played 50 games at home in Cricket World Cup League 2. They would have continued to improve, but they're never going to get to that level where they need to to compete on a regular basis. And we remember we saw in Zimbabwe, they can do it. You know, 100 and, 180, 190 run opening partnership against Zimbabwe. That was on the first day of the tournament. Yeah. There's been probably a little bit more of the inconsistency creeping in to the batting, but that's only become, become about because A, they're facing better quality bowling and B, quite often they're chasing a big score. So against the West Indies, when they had the West Indies in big trouble in the first 15, 20 overs and that catch was put down off Nicholas Poran, we yeah. made it 59 for four. That will, that will have made a huge difference, with, isn't it? Exactly. So you take those small moments. The, to, to beat higher-ranked opposition, almost everything has to go your way. If it doesn't, you learn some very tough lessons. Yeah, isn't it? Especially even the match against Pakistan, the catch of Babar, you know, if, uh, that has uh, gone to the hands of current case. That will have made a huge difference isn't it, in the outcome of the match. Look, massive, massive difference. If that's taken, it's 130 for four. There's an entirely different feel to the game. And, you know, the, the man who's coming in, I think it probably would have been Shadab Khan, who would have had to come in then at number seven. He's under pressure. He can't go from the first ball. Yeah. So the 300 plus score disappears immediately with that catch. They could still get 260, 280, yeah. but there's a game on then. Whereas if you're chasing 330 against the quality of these guys, first time yeah. under floodlights, it's probably never going to happen. You're never going to chase down that total. Yeah. But I thought there was plenty of things that showed the kind of cricket that Monty Desai wants them to play. I think the one thing that I was probably most disappointed with, actually, wasn't the bowling effort or the issues with the death bowling. We know about that. It was some of the ground fielding. Yeah, you know, true. Nepal are an excellent fielding side. I rave about how good they are. Yeah, and that, was a, that was a carpet outfield there in Multan. It was beautiful. And despite that, and despite two amazing runouts from Royal Powell and Dependra Singh Ari, there was five, maybe six regulation balls fumbled. That would have been a little bit of the pressure, a little bit of the, you know, they'll probably yeah. been looking at their social media feeds or getting all their messages. They'll have known what a big occasion it was, the extra crowded, the opposition crowd rather than the home crowd that they're used to. So that disappointed me. Everything else, I felt there was lots of promise, particularly the bowling effort. The first 30, 35 hours of the bowling were outstanding. Isn't it? And especially, especially the Renault side on losing to the number one side, isn't it? The quality side like Pakistan. And uh, one more thing I like to uh, Andrew, like 
do you think like uh, what will what will be the biggest biggest experience for these players playing like a big player like Babar Azam, uh, especially this first match? Especially this match, what are your uh, initial thoughts? Like, how big is this for the Pakistani team to play with the likes of Babar Azam and Sain Safridi? Yeah, and look at look at who they got coming up for Akoli, um, Rohit Sharma, <laughs> Jasprit yeah. Bumrah, who I was just commentating yeah. our, on here for India. Look, it, it, I hope it's going to stock them full with a huge amount of belief that they can compete at this level, because I know they can. Yeah. And and all of the experiences that we had with them in Zimbabwe showed to me that they can as well. Again, you'd look at the pure scorecard of that uh, West Indies versus Nepal game, and you say, oh, they were beaten by more than 100 runs. But that doesn't tell the tale of the tape within the contest. Um, a lot of the focus now will turn after this game against India to the T20 format. And I can understand why that's going to be the case with the chance to get back to a World Cup for the first time since 2014. It will have been exactly a decade Absolutely. They'll have had a, a gap from a World Cup. But with that increasing to 20 teams, I think with all the power hitting that Nepal have with the home fans that they'll get throughout that Asia qualifier for the T20 World Cup, I think they've got a real, real chance. It won't be like you could even make them favourites for the tournament, but it won't be by any means an absolute guarantee that they will go through because it's such a competitive region in Asia and the eight teams will play it for the two spots. And I think if I'm guessing what the format's going to likely to be, it'll probably be two groups of four with semi-finals and the winners just qualifying. If I know the ICC, they tend to keep those events very, very tight because of costs. Yeah. So if that's the case, it could all come down to one day at the TU International Cricket Ground. You'd expect them to get through the group all right. But if they can win that game, get back to a T20 World Cup, that'll be next year in the USA and the West Indies. That will, again, the great thing about that World Cup is it increases to 20 teams and there's an open draw. So they will go in with the big boys. There's no preliminary stages anymore like they had in 2014 when they were playing against Hong Kong and Bangladesh and these guys. They will go into the main World Cup so they could easily get a group again. Who knows? They might play Australia for the first time. I know you're down there. Yeah. They could play against New Zealand. They could go in against... Uh, India or Pakistan again. So th the more regular cricket they get against these guys, the more they're going to improve. Um, and look, I think they should take a huge amount from their exposure here at the Asia Cup. And certainly after the first performance, they should hold their heads high. If they can do even better against India, there will be a massive amount for the country to take from it. Yeah, isn't it? And uh, what do you make of Nepal's chances going forward to Sri Lanka? Because they have a big match coming up against uh, uh, Roy Sharma's side. So what are your initials for some that? Yeah, look, it's it's going to be a huge challenge. Um, I, may, I may upset a few Indian fans here. I think Pakistan in Pakistan is a much tougher challenge than India in Sri Lanka. That's not to say that India aren't still favourites for yeah. this game. India... Yeah are massive favourites to, yeah. to beat Nepal. Of course they are. Yeah. But who knows? And I was just watching the India-Pakistan game here this morning. Yeah. You know, if, if Pakistan go on to beat India, yeah. it's it's a, it's a straight shootout. If Nepal could yeah. pull up one of the great upsets of all time, they're going to go through to the Super 4. They get three more games against Test Nations. Yeah. That's probably too much of a dream to speculate about. Yeah. I think the focus should be on putting in a good performance and enjoying the moment, enjoying playing against Virat Kohli. A couple of things I would love to see. Firstly, from the batters, at the even if they're batting second and chasing a big score, at the top of the order, take a little bit more time. What we've tended to see in ODI cricket in recent years is success from sides who don't lose wickets in the power play. Absolutely. So the, the, the attacking nature of white ball cricket, which is driven by the T20 game, where batters go at it from ball one, isn't really happening in the modern ODI game because of the two new balls, the one new ball at either end. So I'd love to see particular, particularly Asif Sheikh be a bit tighter because he's such a stylish and elegant and brilliantly technically correct player. Yeah. He doesn't need to score quickly for those first 10 overs. In fact, if he's there at the end of the first 10 overs and you think about all that batting firepower to come, whatever the scenario, whatever the situation, that will set Nepal up really well. I wouldn't even mind 30 for none after 10. That's fine. 28 for none after 10. I don't mind that. It's significantly better than yeah. 40 for three or 45 for three. So preserve wickets with, again, so obviously a very good bowling attack in the shape yeah. of India, but then keep yourselves alive in the game. With the fielding, I'd love to see an improved effort. I think they've shown their X-factor moments that are some of the very best in the world. I think Dependra Singh Ayuri is one of the best fielders in the world, bar none, top 10 in the world for me. So I want to see those magic moments again, but just do all the basics a bit better. And I'd stick with the same team. Yeah. 
And I think, look, hopefully they can put up a much closer contest. They competed really hard for about 35 hours for about a third of the contest against Pakistan before they were blitzed away. Let's hope they can stay in that contest longer and longer and longer and start to make the Indian fans sweat. Yeah, isn't it? And there has been a lot of praise going in, in the social media as well from the executor as well on Nepal that they deserve to be there in the Asia Cup. But uh, honestly, uh, Andrew, do you think like uh, our team has lacked some experience playing this format? Do you mean playing the ODI format yeah, or just playing teams? ODI format and this uh, biggest platform playing a big nation like India and Pakistan. I don't think they have any any experience of playing ODI cricket. The cricket World Cup League Two has been brilliant for them, like it has for all the the seven other associates, the six others, the seven in total that have played within it. They've never had as much ODI cricket. All of these guys now, you saw Sandy Plamachani playing his fiftieth game the other day. Um, all of them have played. The vast majority of them have played forty, fifty plus ODIs now because of Cricket World Cup League Two with that thirty six ODI run. What they do lack, though, is the. Experience Exposure and the experience of playing on such gigantic stages against some of the very best in the world. Really, for an awful lot of the players, you know, a handful ex- accepted the likes of Sam Palkami, Karen KC, and Sandy Plamachani. Yep. Zimbabwe was the first kind of dip of the toe into the water of, oh, what's it like to play against the West Indies and face Alzari Joseph bowling at 150 kilometers an hour? They hadn't experienced that before I- I- in any way. So, Definitely a lack of exposure against the very best sides, but that's the same for the vast majority of the associates. What Cricket World Cup League 2 and the Asian Cricket Council structures that have come in on top of that have given the best associates is a bit of a a breeding ground to develop their best players, to get them to their best level against the other associates. What's missing then is maybe the icing on the cake. They've got the layers of all the cake to get them to a certain point. But the icing on the cake can't be applied till they play against the very best in the world. There's only two ways to do that in the modern game. One, to either qualify for global events or, or get, get them to come to you in bilaterals. Or two, get individual players out on the franchise circuit. And that was, for me, really heartening to see that both Sandy Vlamichani and Dependra Singh Iri were signed there in the yeah. GT20 Canada. And someone like Iri, for me... I'd add other players into this list, Kushal Bertel, for example. I'd add Lalit Rajbanchi. I think he's a, an exceptional baller. Yeah, yeah. Um, these kind of guys, if they can get exposure within these franchise leagues, I, I think that's going to just only come back and, and bolster the skills in, in Nepal. Yeah, absolutely, isn't it? Because uh, this young player, especially the Nepalese player, they're very young, very young and uh, they have and, uh, got a lot of cricket remaining to play for the side. Uh, one more thing, and like, uh, how you will see the match against India? Because they are going to play a big player like Virat Kohli, Rohit Sharma, Bumrah. So, how big exposure is this for Nepal cricket? Look, it, it it's hard to explain how big it is. Um, I've actually been working quite closely with the Star Sports team over the last week or so, trying to get across to them all of the background stories, all of the the magic of of Nepal. You might have seen in the broadcast against Pakistan, we managed to get some of the footage in from the TU International yeah. Cricket Ground. Um, and look, I wish I could have been there to explain yeah, the stories in, in person. And, and, you know, for Pakistan, it very nearly happened. I was never going to be able to get to Sri Lanka because they have a whole host of Indian commentators, and, and I totally get that. Um, but look, it, it's, it's incredibly difficult to explain for... Many casual cricket fans, I'm not saying this should be the case, it might be their first modern exposure or modern knowledge that Nepal have a very good cricket team. Um, and you're always going to get some nonsense comments when when an associate side goes down to a, a heavy defeat. Like that, to be honest, is the expected result. It should be the result. Yeah, if we look at the, the funding models of the two countries in terms of the the, the, the facilities that they have, the yeah. player base that they have, the coaches that they have. Yeah. This year, like I think, I think Monty Desai told me there's one bowling machine in all of Nepal. Yeah, there's probably in one city in India there's probably ten thousand bowling machines. So absolutely, the dis- the disparity it's the haves and the have-nots. It's David versus Goliath. So the expected outcome, the expected result should be a gigantic win for the the, the Goliath for the Indian team. Absolutely. But that's the thing I love about sport. You, yeah. you, all of that, once you walk across the line, all of that goes away. And you have 11 v 11. And, and on any one given day, yes, it's incredibly unlikely. And yes, if you play the game 100 times, 99, maybe even 99 and a half times, India will win. Yeah. But occasionally, 
the small side wins. And we've seen that. We've seen Ireland do it. We've seen Scotland do it. We've seen the Netherlands do it. You know, we saw uh, UAE do it quite recently against uh, New Zealand. And it will come for Nepal. They haven't beaten a test nation yet, yeah. but it will come. And I promise you it will come probably sooner than we think. Now, will that happen in two days? I don't think so. I think India will win. Yeah. But I'm hoping, a little bit like we saw for the first 30 overs against Pakistan, we're going to see the best of Nepali cricket. Yeah. And, and I tell you, you could almost hear, you could hear it in the commentator's voice, everyone voices everyone barring Andy Flower, who I was there with in Zimbabwe. So I'd given him such a background on how brilliant their power were. And, and he yeah. became quite close friends with the guy. Um, and he was he was blown away by how brilliant they were. Every other commentator was like, oh, these guys are quite good. Yeah. <laughs> there was a surprise of, oh, yeah. wow, look at look at Nepal. They're actually good. Looks so like- um, I'm hoping that we will see that. I'm hoping that we will hear some shocked commentators <laughs> yeah, uh, from India good. going, oh, these guys are quite good. Yeah. Uh, because that that is how good they can be. It will probably be too big a stretch for them to win the game. Yeah. But let's hope they have 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 really good overs in the yeah, contest. Isn't it? Cricket is a funny game, isn't it, Andrew? Because uh, sometimes we can see the result can go either way. And as you said, like if uh, Pakistan can get away today, since they are playing with India, and uh, India is slowly getting back in the game. But, uh, yeah, I'm just giving. We're, yeah. we're obviously we're kind of following it live. Isan Kishan and Hardik Pandya getting them back into the game. Yeah. But you know, Rohit Sharma gone for eleven, for Akoli gone for four. Wouldn't mind yeah. that in a couple of days' time. That'd bat- be nice. The batting is the Indian batting is has been exposed, isn't it? Because the top order is not getting jumped on. So that uh, uh, Nepal can look at that and uh, have a look and can track uh, their batting uh, top of the batsmen. What is it? Uh, yeah, look, I suppose it will go one of two ways if they did lose to Pakistan. There's every chance India will turn this game around and win it. Yeah. And if India win it, really, that's Nepal's tournament over. It's it, Monday is for fun. Because right. even if they beat India, the, the net run rate will mean that they they will be out. Yeah. But I suppose that the thing for a little bit of what I'm describing is how it could go one of two ways is that if India lost today, they yeah. could come out under real pressure and... and be pressured by Nepal and we could get into a dogfight between the two teams or they could bounce back very heavily and take it out on Nepal. Let's hope. I'd love to see Pakistan win that game because it keeps the India-Nepal game as a straight knockout. But whatever happens, it's a day that should be celebrated. It's a day, I've I've spoken a little bit on on text message to to Rohit Powell, the captain. It's his birthday today, of course, too. Um, And, you know, I've been just trying to get across to him to enjoy it, to make sure not to feel like there is no pressure. For me, there's no pressure on Nepal. It's a win-win situation. If they have a result like they did two days ago, it doesn't really matter. If they can do a little bit better than that, it's brilliant. And um, look, I just think the country should be incredibly proud, whatever the result, uh, for them to qualify from the whole Asian region to play against the five big teams is a huge achievement. And hopefully it's the first of, of many Asia Cup appearances to come in the future. Isn't it? But if Pakistan managed Pakistan to win today, then the, the last match is completely alive, isn't it? The Nepal match is completely alive. The group is still alive. So I'll be looking for, we'll be closely looking on that as well. <laughs> I just want to uh, talk a little bit about the, uh, the Pakistan, India Pakistan match as well, which is going at the moment. So your initial thoughts on this match, because it's already, already one of us has already completed uh, in the Indian innings. What do you think, uh, what do you make of this match? Which side is having a yes? Yeah, look, I got to watch the second session there before coming on with you. Um, I thought that the the Pakistan quicks were outstanding again. Uh, you know, Harris Rauf is is a special cricketer, he really is. And um, Shaheen Shah Afridi picking up a couple too. And then I think what we're seeing here, though, is the depth of Indian Indian cricket. You know, if you've got Ravindra to Jadeja coming in at seven, and yeah. Ishan Kishan and Pandya building a really good partnership here for the fifth wicket. You know, from the platform they have, they'll still be thinking of 300 plus. And I think with their bowling attack, that should be enough. We saw it, it's the same ground that uh, Sri Lanka struck. They didn't struggle. They they took a little while to chase 150, 160 against Bangladesh. So if India pushed up towards a 280, 300 mark, that could be enough, particularly with, you know, Mohamed Siraj, Jasper Bumra, Kulvi yeah. Biadav and Jadeja. That's a hell of a four, four bowling four bowlers attack, let alone mentioning Charles Thacker and the other options and Arnik Pandya. So, yeah, look, I'd probably still make India favourites, but uh, interesting to see how it plays out. Yeah, isn't it? Uh, it's been a great match already. Uh, still, the match is hanging right with the balance. Maybe India will be ahead at the moment, but it's still... 50-50. It's looking 50-50, isn't it? 